Farming to Glory, a Jamaican Family Chronicle by Fred D. Townsend Sr. by Companion Press, ISBN 1560434295, printed in the USA for worldwide distribution. Farming to Glory, a Jamaican Family Chronicle by Fred D. Townsend Sr. Acknowledgement, I wish, first of all, to express gratitude to my wife, Dorrit, for bearing with me throughout this period of this research. My self-inflicted seclusion bothered her, as on several occasions I isolated myself in preparatory transcription and deep meditation, thanks to my son Douglas for proofreading the drafts and for doing the cassettes for his able wife to stenograph. I owe enormous appreciation to my daughter-in-law, Patricia, for typing the manuscript over and over without complaining. I must also thank my nephew, Rudolph, for giving me useful information and for bringing me up to date with the important issues I had almost forgotten. I am indebted to his son Floyd for professionally doing the sketches from old pictures. My other sons, Lennox and Fred Jr. must also receive their share of gratitude for their constructive criticism and the obvious interest and amusement they displayed with the content forward magnificent reflections this composition is affectionately dedicated to the memory of my mother and father Gertrude and Frederick Townsend and my, my brother Martin perhaps the best way of introducing my conviction towards this dedication is to quote King David in Psalm 36, 8 and 9. They shall be abundantly satisfied with fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is a fountain of life. In thy light we, sh we sh in thy light shall we see light a generation of siblings shared with felicitation and gratitude the prophetic enunciation of the revered patriarch <clears throat> i was among the remnant of the surviving offsprings who shared the aspiration of becoming as notable as those who begat us. But soon we discovered that the road of ascension was excruciatingly rough and steep and our endeavors failed in going just beyond the second or third rung of the ladder. We must therefore sympathize with the young ones for the present, of the present generation who cannot readily appreciate the motives and interests of those who went on before them. For we ourselves could not have fully comprehended the sacrifices and struggles our four parents 
went through for our six <clears throat> about the author Fred Demonary De Townsend was the last child <coughs> of Frederick Townsend and his wife Gertrude <coughs> sorry he was born in the little village known as Queens Hill in the parish of St. Andrew, Jamaica, West Indies, over 50 years ago. Fred, Fred attended the local Dallas Castle Elementary School at an early age and after writing the Jamaica local examinations went to Lincoln College in Kingston. From Lincoln College, he went to the prestigious Murgrove High in St. Andrew on an exhibition scholarship, graduating with the Senior Cambridge Certificate. <coughs> Sir, Young Townsend entered the Jamaica Civil Service and was assigned to the Public Works Department's head office in Halfway Tree. He remained here for almost two years before entering the primary health care services and successfully completing the Royal Society of Health Examinations. On graduation, Fred married his wife, Dorit Dean, and went right into having four sons and no daughters. He worked with four sons and no daughters. He worked with the Kingston and St. Andrew Health Department for over 25 years, attaining the position of Deputy Chief Public <coughs> sorry, Health Inspector. He retired from the service and migrated to the U.S. of A. Mr. Townsend obtained extensive training in his chosen vocation, receiving London-based health diplomas and several World Health Organization and PAHO sponsored courses leading to professional certifications. He had also developed his educational skills by attending the College of Arts, Science and Technology and the University of the West Indies. Townsend holds a Bachelor of Science degree and continues to read for further qualifications in the United States. <clears throat> Introduction The untimely departure of my parents one after the other in 1965 and 1966 and that of my brother Martin 20 years later brought about the un unforeseen vacuum in our family circle. I had experienced the intimacy and closeness of loved ones and also the rigid hands of death in the family and I recall the passing of my brother Joshua Josiah in 1937 when I was very young then my first son Carl died in 1975 when he was only 
in his early teens. But we had grown appreciative. We have grown to appreciate the value, the presence, and the loveliness of our parents during their years of struggle for our survival. Their worth never diminished but rather increased as they approached the evening of their days. Our love for them grew stronger. Theirs were the lives of example, of honesty and devotion. It is said that Martin's deportment and behavioral traits resembled closely those of our parents. Perhaps it was on that account that he became so endeared and loved by all of us. As will be pointed out later, he was to play the pivotal role in keeping the family clan together and later after the demise of our parents and the toll of the immigration trek he became the main stabilizer of our despondencies and especially supportive to me in my early explorations. <clears throat> it might not be possible in this short analogy, analogy to unfold all the hidden treasures of the past. In any case, an attempt must be made to disclose the untarnished but yet obscured bullions. Fred Jr. said, A proud hindward glance is our motto to proceed, and a tribute to the past we must not impede. The legacies unfold must not be hidden, and revealing the truth of our relics must not be forbidden. Let me recite The Crossing of the Bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson in reinforcing this memorial and dedication to my parents, Frederick and Gertrude Towson and my brother, Martin. And he writes a poem here. <clears throat> Sunset an evening star and one clear call for me and may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea but such tides as moving seem asleep too full for sound and foam then when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. <laughs> but twilight and even bells and after that the dark and may there be no sadness or farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place the flood may hear me far i hope to see my pilot face to face when i have crossed the bar chapter one big house big house the farmer's dream 
My own sibling group was resilient and we had the determination to advance for those who were my forerunners became breadwinners in early life and helped in providing for the emerging winners. This interfered to some extent with their scholastic pursuits and achievements, resulted instead into a thriving agricultural peasantry. Young people in those days resented farm work in preference to regular school attendance. My father was big papa, respected and admired by all. He was Busha Townsend to the country folks. My mother was dear mama to us. Mistress T, godmother and aunt to others in the district. Papa was headman on the Flamsid estate in the hills of St. Andrew, just east of the Blue Mountain Peak, and approximately 12 miles from the center of Kingston. It comprised, it comprised 800 acres of forest land interspread with the farming of vegetable crops and sugar cane. He had about 150 tenant farmers to supervise. Busha Townsend was quite set in his charge. At home, about two miles down the hill from the farmlands, Mama was, in every respect, mother, wife, teacher, and homemaker. She was a milliner and her hand-operated singer machine never found time to rest. At least not with seven boys and seven girls with their clothes to sew. Oh, most important of all, Busha's pants and shirt to wash iron and darn! Dear Mama was a rare type of woman, not because she was her mother, mother, I have already taken much care to remove that bias, but because she was typical of the godly mothers we read about in the Bible. This unchallenged fact will be clearly revealed as we go on. She was very dear to all the children in the community. Things are so different in things were so different in those early days when my mother and father were in their late 50s. I remember when dad was hardly gray and mom's silky hair had few white strands. They were strong and aggressive and it seemed then that hardship was only a challenge to succeed. And we pause here for today. Peace out. Farming to glory. Big up. Fred Thousand. Fred!